Beautiful angle. Planning, standing, all the time is spanning, waiting for the show. Sean, if you could be immortal, would you choose to be? Absolutely not. This country is going to hell in a handbasket. I would not want to live past 2080. Our money supply is going to collapse. And also, like, I mean, let's, let's, let's set the parameters here. If I'm immortal, am I constantly growing old? Like, do I just keep aging like a crustacean? No, you would stay in this scenario. You would stay in your physical state which means that your butt, your brain won't alter either. Hmm. Okay. So, so if you, if you, if you became immortal at like 28, like then you would forever have the mind of a 28 year old. So if I was going to be immortal, I would absolutely 110% choose to be immortal at the age of 21 or 22. No. Yeah. 21 or 22. So I have uh, pulled up, I think, I think I would be inclined to agree with what you just said. I just pulled up an anecdote, uh, a short story, if you will, from the wonderful app Creepy Pasta, which I think John actually introduced me to uh, back in 2013, 2012, um, that summarizes my thoughts on being immortal. It's called The Last Man on Earth. The last man on earth looked up at the sky, red as blood, all hints of blue had long since evaporated away into the cosmos. As Earth began its final plunge into the red giant, the man once again recalled the same thought that had plagued him for billions of years. Why did I ever think immortality would be a good thing? So the question isn't, are you prepared to be young forever and like have a ball? The question is, are you prepared to live for billions of years until the Earth collapses into the sun and you still won't die are you ready for that like the rest of us no no see that's <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad about how enthusiastic you were about it but this is literally stuff i was doing like i had to be thinking about this all the time when i was doing tuck uh because yeah like that like i remember we had a character development day with the directors and they and the and they they said to me like or they were saying like oh yeah even after the world explodes the talks will still be just floating around in space and they'll just be doomed forever and I'm like yeah that would suck but like at the same time like you get to see what happens after mm. I don't know like I, like does immortality also immortal, imply does it also imply, um, uh, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Like essentially invincibility. Like if I yes, decided, yes. okay, so I can't just take like, uh, I don't want to be too morbid or anything or grotesque, but you know, think of some like terrible injury that you could do to yourself. You know, if you're ever in a, in a bad state, you're, you're sick of the immortality and you're like, okay, I'll just think of a silly one. Okay, I'm going to chop off my, my leg, right? Like, could you chop off your leg? Would your leg come off? Like, would you feel the pain of chopping off your leg? Like, could someone just, or is it like you try and chop it off and it's like, zzz, like, can't be hurt, can't die? So, you know, like, that's probably one of the biggest aggravations that I had with, just for context, like, everyone that's watching this, just like, I did a production of Tuck Everlasting, like, last month. And the character, like, I was part of a four person family that was like immortal. Um, and they had already been living for like 250 years. And oh, that's just the beginning, baby. Um, you got billions to go. Um, but in that show, like 
they're like, oh, let's shoot each other with a gun. And like it like they like the author never like went into detail. Like, does it heal like Wolverine? Does it like is there is there a hole there? But like it just like stays there forever and nothing happens. Like it doesn't explain that, neither does she in the book. And when we talk to the directors about it, they're just like, we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole. So it I seems like an important rabbit hole to go down. I agree, but it's gonna lead nowhere because there are no answers. Um, so I think that it's like Wolverine. And just like like whenever whenever you get slashed, it just like heal, it just like you can see the skin like crawling back. So if you chopped off your legs, I bet. That like the legs would be like magnetically like your torso and your leg area would be like magnetically attracted to each other so like even if you cut it off it would just like stick to it and then it would heal. well that with that really with that in mind okay so that actually creates a greater case for immortality then um it creates a greater case because you couldn't accidentally like one day like you know make yourself some kind of you know a, a, what's the term like essentially dismember yourself and then be stuck with that for, for the rest of your life. Like you wouldn't have to do that. That's great. You'll always be healed. Um, so, okay. Another case for immortality is the longer you live, the more likely they are to find a uh, cure for immortality. So if you don't take it, you're just, you're confined to definitely go out someday. But if you do take it, maybe in like, a thousand years, you know, science has evolved where they're like, hey, remember that time that like that wizard made people immortal? Well, we just developed a pill where you can stop being immortal. And you're like, mm, got to live a thousand years invincible and do what I want. And now I'm gonna go out on my own terms. You know, like, I mean, to me, that'd be, that'd be the ultimate W. That'd be the ultimate win. But here's another question. Would you be immortal if you were the only one who got to be immortal. With Tuck, at least they have each other. But like, think of your parents, think of your spouse, think of your children. Like, and I know we're not married or have kids yet, but just metaphorically, right? Like, would you want to know, hey, I'm gonna outlive you all. And like, you're all gonna go and I can't take you with me. Well, I want to reference a Marvel movie, but someone doesn't watch them in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah, it's because I, you know, I, I hit I hit puberty once. <laughs> There's this planet like, though, like spiritual, like he's a god, and his name is Ego, and his like he essentially like goes to a bunch of planets and like impregnates like, you know, people that can give birth, and like, then like he and then like that's his that's his like he's just infecting the universe that way, and then like main character star lord goes and like meets him and stuff they end up fighting and he ends up killing him but like what are we talking about immortality oh it's would you be immortal if you were the only one so like everyone you ever knew you'd see them all come and go and you couldn't take anyone you wouldn't have the shared experience with anyone else oh yeah, 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 yeah so that, that was kind of like what he was doing is that he would just like go live all these like different lives with different people throughout his existence and then, but he was like always a god, so he just like go back. But he like he literally lived a full human life with the the main character's mother, or maybe it was a fling. Either way, he got to choose when he, it started and when it ended, and he just mm. like left. So I guess it would kind of be like that. But when you like think about that, like I mean, he's the he's that character is immortal, and like, but there's something like really <laughs> about doing that, you know? Like even though like it doesn't, it wouldn't make sense. Like if he like didn't hurt anyone in the process, like would it be to just like have a bunch of lives like that with different people? Like I think there's some, yeah. I feel like it's kind of it'd be it'd be a bad be thing like, if he was. It would be it would be ethically wrong if he was living lives with a bunch of other people and like making their lives bad because there would be no consequences for him, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if he's bringing good to the lives and you know if you're a utilitarian and you're trying to do the most good if you brought good to 10 people's lives even though you knew that you'd outlive them and do it again with somebody else you can make the case that that's no that's a good thing he brought good to 10 people's lives um sidebar though so 
Can you imagine? So bad luck, Brian, the bad luck, Brian of immortality gets immortality, does something stupid, gets caught, gets a life sentence. <laughs> and then like, they're just like, he just won't die. Like he's been in jail for 200 years. They put you in like maximum lockdown because they figure out you're immortal. Like what if they revealed that at trial? The defense attorney's like, your honor, I, I motion to strike. Um, he can't do a life sentence. It's cruel and unusual because he's immortal. And as soon as they say that, they're like, all right, get, get this guy to the underground bunker. Like he's not going nowhere. You're surrounded by like a hundred like military guards for the rest of your existence. I keep swapping them out every 50 years. Like you, you can't even like blink without somebody monitoring you, you know, like. <laughs> that that is the bad luck gee, grandpa mortality. gee grandpa i can't wait to grow up to be just like you yes Billy. i've been watching this immortal for my entire life and when you get old enough you will have to be one of the 50 people just like us who are watching this immortal oh great <laughs> oh, that's why i'm gonna be like so i'm gonna get to work with my cousins yes yes <laughs> it's like the meme the the infamous um uh, like, like de depressed Wojak and then like the money printer where he's like, please, I've been a zoo animal for 300 years. I've done my time. Just let me like get out of this life sentence. And then everybody's like, yay, tickets to see the immortal man. This is awful, you know? It's awful stuff. Um, but if you don't laugh, you cry. Think... That's what Norm MacDonald and Gilbert Gottfried taught us. Yeah, I mean, the world would definitely turn on you if you were immortal. So that's why you can't tell anybody. Yeah, because there is like I, I would I would I think if there was immortality, like I think yeah, I, I think I think there would still be a death though, like and that is having the freedom to be free taken away. Like like if you if someone found out you were immortal, like that would essentially be it. Like that is your death, except you don't die after that. But if you can avoid that situation, then I think being immortal would be cool. Like as long as you can avoid that situation at all costs, because I don't, it doesn't, immortality wouldn't give you super strength. I mean, like you could like, you, you, I mean, if they put you in a cage, like you can't get out, but you could easily, like if someone was shooting you, you could just like keep walking. Like, yeah. That's, that's, so that's as, interesting. Like, they can put you in a box. That's the conundrum, right? Cause I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking about this at a very micro level. So you're in a jail cell, right? And like, let's say you're just an average size person, right? Like you're not like, you know, the Hulk or anything. If you're immortal and you can't feel pain or like- Ah, uh, you just referenced Marvel. Yeah, the Hulk transcends right. Marvel. The Hulk was around when I was like four years old. Then you have this new age Marvel thing where they're like, we're just gonna pump, 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 movie out every four months. It's all CGI. It's all the same plot. And we're gonna get the same people just dropping their hard-earned inflated money at the movie theater. They're gonna be like, whoa, for two hours. You're enslaved. To the system, man. Anyway, uh, so the Hulk, you're not the Hulk, but so you're in a jail cell, you're immortal. You're in a jail cell and you're immortal. And you're like, oh, well, I'm not gonna feel pain. So I'm just gonna like weasel through these bars and like you like force your body through the bars, which would otherwise like, you know, hurt you, but you're immortal. So you're like, haha, I've weaseled out of the bars. And then the cops, you know, or the, the, the bailiffs, whatever, who runs a jail cell? I don't know. They, they try and like shoot the you, warden. but the warden, yeah, the warden tries to shoot you but you're like, haha, like the bullets don't hurt me. But then like three guys, like big, like beefy six foot six warden bailiff cop people could just be like, okay, we're just going to grab you and put you back in the cell. And like, if you're immortal, but not super strength, then like, you can't, you can't weasel out of three big beefy cop guys putting you in the cell. So it's almost like you have the supernatural power, but the, the simple stops you. <laughs> I'm definitely like overthinking this, but that's, that's, that's the worst case scenario. That's the I, worst case I scenario. would, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't, yeah, the more I think about it, I don't think I would choose immortality, even though I would like to live longer, but you know, like I, I think, I think the ultimate goal for like, I think in our evolution as a life form, I think the ultimate goal is to be able to choose when we die. What if someday like humans can upload their consciousness into machines and then like our, like we can just like, what if we could just relocate our consciousness, like artificial bodies? I think that would be cool. And then like eventually when you just don't want to keep going, like you just let the consciousness fade. 
Um, or like you just don't like upload yourself to a being for a while. Like maybe someone could be like in charge of like replacing consciousness. Like like what if it's just, just this giant room and like you have to like, okay, this person wants to be alive now. And like, oh, I'm gonna take a break for like 50,000 years. Like I wanna check out what's after, what it's like after that. I think that would be, I think that is the ultimate goal, dude. Mm. So I'm not saying they have that already because they don't in the way you're explaining it, but it's already trending that way in two ways. One, just the cloud in general. It's not your consciousness, but like, you know, think of this generation right now and like people who are on smartphones, Google Drive, iCloud, like if, if you were gone tomorrow, your consciousness, your day to day is still in the server. So like, you know, if a historian or a relative wanted to be like, oh, I want to learn more about my, you know, uh, cousin, son, father, whatever, like the cloud is still there, right? In terms of like what you were up to. So there's that. Second thing is the metaverse. So I admittedly am not an expert in the metaverse. Somehow you can invest in the metaverse. I don't know how, um, but they were, I was reading an article where the idea would be before you die, you create an avatar in the metaverse and you help program that avatar to like be as much of you as possible so that when you die, your grandkids, kids, whoever can go into the metaverse and have a realistic AI conversation with you, even though it's not your consciousness, it's like you went up there and essentially set up a robot in the metaverse who can like still be you. Kind of like the um, Harry Potter, they have the, the paintings where they talk as if it's the person, but it's not really the person. I don't really remember the details there, but it's, you know, it's the same thing. What do you think of that? Well, first off is that I agree that's how the paintings at Hogwarts work, but I think like once JK Rowling wrote in Ghosts, like, like why why do those ghosts get to be ghosts? But like Harry needs a special stone to bring them back. Anyway. I'm pretty sure they explained um, that at one point, but I don't remember why. But like they didn't they didn't leave that unanswered. Because he's like, why can't Sirius Black be a ghost? And then there was like prophetic answer. And the readers are like, oh, okay, yeah, get it now. It's been a while since I read Harry Potter. Um I'll look so, wait, later. Well, what was what was your question again? It wasn't a, I guess it was just, what do you think about the metaverse oh, the, yeah, and the, like essentially think, like letting yourself live in Facebook as a avatar for your, I think it's a cool idea. And then you start to realize that you will never actually get to experience the nostalgia of missing someone after they're gone. So you always just remember that they're an asshole. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Can you, so like, like, again, like bad, bad like, luck, Brian, <laughs> bad luck, Brian metaverse scenario. You are like, ha, ah, uh, my people, my, 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 my kin, I had 12 grandkids, you know, they all had 12 kids. They're going to remember me in this Mark Zuckerberg universe. I'm going to make myself. And then like society evolves where like views that were mainstream today are fringe in like 20 years. And so they're like, wow, I'm really glad. I'm really glad that grandpa preserved himself because now we know that he was a jerk. And then like, you're like looking down or looking up, you know, depending on where you ended up and you're like, ah, oh, damn it. Should have let my wistful memories of myself been the memory they had. I had a hiccup, sorry. Classic. I thought, because I thought you were about to say something. So I'm like, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I had that effect on you. <laughs> um, all right. Long, long ago, there lived these joyous, creative creatures called humans, or people. Little bundles of biomatter that inhabited the Earth. Earth, the third planet from the sun.